Hey, what's up guys? It's your voice feed here and today we're going to be going over counters to the meta. In today's video, I've picked out six heroes that all are very, very popular in public matchmaking of Dota 2. So no, I'm not really going to be structuring this video around the pro scene too much, even though I probably will mention the pro scene sometimes and their opinions on the game. I will be mostly focusing these counters to the meta on what you will experience in your everyday pub. So let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is gonna help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. All right, so the first hero we're gonna talk about is one of the best supports in Dota right now, and that is Undying. All right, so Undying is kind of known for his laning prowess and overall team fights. So you kind of need heroes that generally deal with that. When it comes to an offlaner that deals with Undying in the laning stage, I think the best in the game is Legion Commander. Legion Commander's ability to sustain against Undying with her E, right, her moment of courage, and be able to trade with him with her Q, which gives attack speed overwhelming odds, is pretty damn good. Even though Legion Commander could theoretically struggle against Undying in the game because of Soul Rip on whoever she duels, right, healing them up, or even now Grab Ally actually pulling people out of duel into uh, <laughs> the tombstone, that does make the matchup a little bit questionable. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned that in this video because yeah, you have to be careful around the Undying Shard. However, a lot of Undyings, especially right now, are not very good about this, nor do they even know. And as a result, this matchup tends to just be straight up favorable. On top of that, a lot of the reason why Legion Commander is good in pubs, like she is literally one of the highest win rate heroes in pubs right now, and will be a hero we talk about in this video, is because of her ability to pick people off in side lanes. And Undying is not good at dealing with that, right? He's not a hero that moves quickly around the map. And so, yeah, you're just gonna be able to get key kills around the map and play this pickoff style that Undying doesn't like. So Legion's just general play style of moving around, you know, maybe she has an eventual Shadow Blade, of course, Blink Dagger. Blade Mail is pretty good against Undying. Also, Undying's reasonably low armor does mean that you can insta-kill him in team fights before he gets off Flesh Golem. So he's actually a very good dual target. The next hero that counters Undying is Medusa. The reason why Medusa doesn't care about Undying is the reason why Medusa doesn't care about a lot of Dota heroes. A lot of Dota heroes plant down abilities or cast spells and want you to run away. And if you don't run away, you'll die to those abilities. And one of those abilities is most certainly Tombstone. However, with Medusa, you just stand still and right click Tombstone, and then you split shot off the Tombstone. So you kill two birds with one stone. While a lot of carries, if they were to hit Tombstone and expend their BKB in order to kill it, it would grief their teamfight completely. Imagine your Sven clicking BKB with God Strength and blinking on a Tombstone. That's terrible. That's terrible. And if he doesn't BKB to kill it, he'll get kited, right? Of course. But with Medusa in the teamfight, you walk up and you click it for your team. On top of that, none of Undying's abilities do that much against Medusa. You might be thinking that the damage amplification from Undying's ultimate is pretty good. And while I will admit sometimes it can be, for the most part, if Undying tries to walk up to a Medusa, she's going to click Stone Gaze or just right click him to death once again due to his pretty bad armor. And so there's really nothing good with Undying against Medusa outside of the fact that he can let you take an early Roche and end the game. But unfortunately in pubs, People don't really take advantage of this, and so I would say Medusa is just straight up an Undying counter. And finally, the last meta counter to Undying is Naga Siren. And honestly, it's for about the same reason Medusa is, and actually part of the reason Legion is. And that's because in teamfights, you're a great tombstone killer, right? You're most certainly a hero that can just walk up to the tombstone with the illusions, and illusions do full damage to the tombstone, so you just insta-kill the tombstone. On top of that, in teamfights, if you so choose, you can click Song of the Siren, and you can actually kill the tombstone during Song of the Siren when everyone's asleep. For some reason, it just works like that. Abilities like Nether Ward and Tombstone can be targeted during the song, and therefore, it's a hard counter. 
On top of that, the map play is very, very good. We kind of talked about how Legion likes splitting up the map. Even Medusa to some extent with Mantis is good, but we talked about how Legion can split up the map and create side lane pressure, which Undying doesn't like. Naga Siren does the same thing. Her split push playstyle in Dota is very favorable against the likes of Undying because he's never going to be able to actually deal with the illusions at any point in the game. He's not going to be able to deal with the lane pressure too well. To be fair, New Undying is actually decent at it with, you know, with the level 10 decay talent and max decay, but he's still not going to do great and he doesn't like the map being split open and as a result Naga forces Undying into a game he doesn't like to play. And finally in team fights, being able to net and kill Undying from full and not allow him to spam decay and kite around, which is typically what he does, is very good. A lot of carries will have a hard time killing him from full due to his, you know, just innate high HP, but honestly due to his bad armor and Riptide reducing armor, with one net you usually can kill Undying from full. Alright now let's talk about counters to Medusa. And the answer answer to that is not a lot, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I think there is one matchup in particular that is very favorable against Medusa. Maybe two, all right? Maybe I'll give you two. And the rest are all just kind of like, eh, nah. But all right, let's get into it. So the first matchup and the matchup that truly destroys Medusa is Darkseer. The reason why is Medusa doesn't pressure Darkseer that hard in the laning stage. So you can get out of the laning stage pretty scot-free with Darkseer, and that feels great because this hero in the mid to late game is insane. On top of that, the first item Darkseer tends to buy and the first two items he buys are Greaves and Crimson, or HP items that give physical resistance. This is exactly what you buy to counter Medusa, and it's inherently what Darkseer wants to buy anyways in most games. So bada bing bada boom, already the first part of the hero counters Medusa, but there's more! And this is the reason why Medusa has a 43% win rate against Darkseer, when against almost every other hero outside of one other, she has a 50% or above. And so the other reason is because Wall of Replica makes a Medusa illusion. And they actually just nerfed Medusa illusions in one of the recent patches, but not enough. Most team comps still can't really kill it, and so you just get this split-shotting Medusa with mana shield every time you spawn a Wall of Replica. And with the talent, it does exactly as much damage as Medusa does. <laughs> and so there's just this Medusa ripping into your entire team. <laughs> and finally, on top of that as well, when you buy your eggs, you get another Medusa illusion. Oh, and I forgot to mention Surge is very good against Medusa because it allows you to kite Stone Gaze. And so honestly, everything about Darkseer is pretty damn good against Medusa, and uh, definitely the hero I would lock in if I'm against you know, Medusa for sure. The next hero is Shadow Demon, which actually doesn't have a great win rate against Dusan Dota buff, but honestly, people don't really know how to play Shadow Demon. I do think Shadow Demon is Medusa counter, and the reason is simple. Creating Illusions of her is just very good. In the mid game, when she's spawning Mantas to push in lanes, you disrupt those Mantas and you get your own Illusions and you can farm waves. So you can get absolutely huge. And when, when you have a good game on, on Shadow Demon, your hero owns, it absolutely owns your first ability disruption, insane great against Medusa. Your second ability, just straight up amps damage on whoever you put it on. Like this ability's crazy. Shadow Poison, whatever, it's fine. And then your ulti, if you eventually buy an Aghanim Scepter, is also straight up nuts, right? Shadow Demon's Ags giving him three charges of his ultimate is crazy. And something you have to keep in mind is when he gets this Ags and gets two charges of the Demonic Purge, it breaks. And this is important against Medusa because when she gets broken, it turns off her split shot. And this is huge because obviously Medusa without split shot is a fraction of herself. And so yeah, if you can imagine, so if you can make enough copies of Medusa to farm up an ax, you can then start just breaking the Medusa in team fights. And this is going to have a crazy amount of impact. Next up is Underlord. This matchup's simple. Crimson, Greaves Buyer, reduces her damage, can man up to her in team fights. It's just mostly like buying Crimson Greaves and you're reducing your damage with Atrophy Aura. There's nothing special here. It's just like a solid matchup. And we actually saw Game and Gladiators pick it recently in the pro scene as well. And the win rate shows as well on Dota buff. It's not great, but it's definitely a good matchup. And finally, I know you guys are expecting the uh, Anti-Mage, where's Anti-Mage? Oh, Anti-Mage. I don't even think this matchup's that bad in like high, high level Dota. I really don't, like I straight up don't. But in Dream League, Anti-Mage was beating Medusa, I will admit, okay? I will admit. And in pubs, it's the second highest winner hero against Medusa. So you burn her mana, you ult her, that's about it. All right, next hero we're gonna talk about, the counter to Spirit Breaker, our Underlord. 
So the reason why Spearbreaker is countered by Underlord is because of the fact that in team fights, Spearbreaker wants to target the backline and kill them off. Underlord can buy pipe and basically make it impossible for Spearbreaker really to pick on any of the backline heroes. On top of that, Spearbreaker has a high HP pool, so his Q does a lot of damage to Spearbreaker when he charges in because it does percentage based damage. On top of that, Pit of Malice is probably the biggest reason why this matchup is tough for Spearbreaker because in team fights, when you put down this pit, it becomes very hard for Spearbreaker to charge. He has to take very specific angles angles, otherwise he's just simply not going to get a good charge off, right? <laughs> like, he'll just get stuck in the pit. All right, the next matchup that's pretty good against Spirit Breaker, but it certainly goes both ways, is Oracle. The reason why Oracle is pretty good against Spirit Breaker is one simple reason, in my opinion, and that is, is that you dispel his bulldoze. Your Q just dispels bulldoze when he charges in, and honestly, that might not seem like a big deal. But the reality is, is it certainly is. Honestly, the main reason why Spearbreaker can sometimes feel like a broken hero is really just Bulldoze. Like honestly, without Bulldoze, the hero just dies. And so if you dispel it with Shadow Demon or Oracle, the hero kind of just gets stuck and perishes. And so even though yes, Oracle can be bad against Spearbreaker because you can get charged and focused, I feel like people in pubs just don't prioritize it enough. And so the win rate shows that Dispelling Spirit Breaker seems to be effective. The next matchup is actually the best win rate against Spirit Breaker on Dota Buff and Pro Tracker, which is Meepo. Honestly, I was hesitant to put this in the video because like I don't see a lot of Meepo and obviously you have to be a Meepo player for this to count. But the fact that it's the best win rate on both makes me feel like I have to put it and theorize a bit here. So keep in mind, a little bit of this is theory. I think it mostly comes down to the fact that being able to chain net Spirit Breaker allows you to kill him even through Bulldoze. I think it really is mostly that because charge in theory is decent against Meepo. You can stun all the Meepos and kite him. So I don't really see why this would necessarily be the case. And also the nets do get reduced, uh, right? They certainly get reduced by a uh, bulldoze. So I guess Spirit Breaker just isn't good against Meepo for those two reasons. You probably can chain net him. And on top of that, you don't really get much value out of your ult. And finally, the last but most important matchup is Undying. No, not not really, guys, but Undying is very good against Spirit Breaker. Any lane that Spirit Breaker tries to play against Undying is just not gonna go very well unless Spirit Breaker pulls waves, in which case the carry will free farm. And so yeah, Undying basically is a guaranteed free lane against uh, Spirit Breaker, and in team fights, it's a hero that Spirit Breaker cannot charge and focus down. On top of that, Decay is just always good against Spirit Breaker in team fights in the lane at any point, or it's a strength hero, it just doesn't really get affected by Bulldoze. Um, a Dying Ulti is also very good against Bulldoze because you hit the guy and it usually slows for like, what, four or five seconds? It's not gonna slow for that long against Spirit Breaker, but you can constantly reapply it as long as you stick on top of him. And so you can actually be one of the only supports that helps your team burst Spirit Breaker through Bulldoze, right? There's definitely not a lot of examples to that, but that is actually one of the examples. All right, getting into the next hero on the list, we have Axe. Axe is countered by Venomancer first off, and the reason why is Axe, as a hero, he wants to go in, right? And then when he goes in, he really wants to get out. Axe is a hero that really doesn't want to man up for long periods of time because of the fact that, well, he just doesn't do a lot of damage by manning up for long periods of time, right? The way Axe does damage is calling people, forcing them to hit him, and therefore spinning. But Venomancer kind of prevents Axe for not only not disengaging after his first call, but also from calling in the first place with Plague Words, right? The Plague Words give vision and cancel blink daggers better than almost any other hero in Dota. And so everything about Venno just kind of counters Axe. It's also a hero that just doesn't care about Blade Mal whatsoever because it's not like Blade Mal calling a Venno unless you're already affected by every single one of his spells is gonna do anything. The next hero is Undying. Undying, it's just top meta, but it's also a good hero against Axe in the lane. It's just a general strength hero you can do well against. On top of that, Grab Ally is just absolutely incredible against Axe. Putting down the tombstone and saving people from Cole is wonderful. And on top of that, it's very similar to, honestly, Venno in a lot of ways. It's actually almost the same in the, in the same way it counters uh, Axe. The Flesh Golem, right? Uh, not only do you not die to Axe Calls and dying, unlike a lot of supports, you just completely eat it up. And then after that, if he calls you in your Flesh Golem, he immediately gets slowed and damage amped. <laughs> so like the hero just can't call you. He kills himself if he calls you. I mean, that's actually how the matchup plays. Unless he has BKB, of course, which a lot of uh, players don't get until later into the game after their Blink, Vanguard, and Blade Mal. So yeah, it's just a matchup that's very not favorable also because of the Tombstone, right? The Tombstone gives the high ground vision, and if any zombie gets on top of Axe, 
uh, his blink gets canceled. So it just becomes a nightmare of a, of a game. And finally, this is a weird one, but the win rates on Pro Tracker and Dota buff both said that sanking is good. And I did some testing and some replay watching before putting this one on the list. And what I've learned is that sanking eggs is incredibly good. Like it's this really cool eggs that I never experimented, nor have I seen a single time. You know, it's quite cool and actually a very good pub build. If you don't know what Ag Sanking does, as a quick thing, and I'm gonna mention it, I'm probably gonna make a video on it because it's really awesome, is it creates mini burrow strikes in Sandstorm every like 0.6 seconds. It creates these two mini burrow strikes, and if you get hit by it, it's, it's pretty random, so sometimes you just won't get hit, but sometimes you get hit a lot, and you can just get stunned and then stunned and then stunned. And Sanking is a hero that does a ton of magic damage to Axe, doesn't care about the blade mail. And on top of that, this new Ags build prevents Axe from really going in and getting out, right? This is, you can kind of see the trend. This is what is good against Axe, right? The heroes that really prevent him from getting out. Uh, but yeah, the Sand King hero is incredibly good at keeping people locked down in an area. I also think that the Sandstorm is such a large AOE with the level 15 talent that it can actually make it hard for Axe to get off good calls depending on what area you're playing. All right, the next hero we're going to talk about that gets countered is Techies. And <laughs> I hate to I hate to keep saying this hero, but it's just good. Like this is why all the pros are picking it cuz it counters a lot of the meta and that's undying. I know I'll stop. I know I I could be more creative, but I just want to give you guys the best options and the reason why I think undying is just good against techies is the lane is fine. A lot of heroes just can't really lane against techies. It's too good of a laner, but Undying is a hero that can do just fine. And then on top of that, it really mostly comes down to the fact that Undying doesn't die to the techies combo. Unlike a lot of supports, you just simply have enough health to deal with it. And on top of that, one thing that I really, really love about this matchup is there is a war in Dota right now around the Roche pits. Which hero can kind of take over the area? and control the area so that their team can secure the most important objective in Dota, and that is Roshan. And Techies is arguably the best hero in the game at doing this because bombs, not only do they just like do damage to people, but they also basically break smokes. They don't actually break smokes, but if they blow up, you know the enemy team is smoked. And so essentially, Undying is one of the only heroes in the game that can fight back against this and get down a good tombstone and try to win the team fights around Roshan. Next up is Medusa. I didn't think Medusa would necessarily be a hero that it would have a great win rate against techies, but it does. And that's partially because Dusa is just one of the best and easiest heroes in Dota, but it's also because of the fact that Dusa just doesn't get blown up by techies. And it's as simple as that. Techies is a hero that actually loves trying to kill enemy carries in teamfights. Slarks, Svens, Wraith Kings, all these heroes can just explode to techies if they're caught off guard. But Medusa, of course, is just not a hero that cares much about burst damage. That's not the way you counter Dusa. You pick heroes that either burn mana or kite her very well. And so Techies is not really one of those heroes. His stun literally forces him to go next to Dusa. And yes, I will admit the best part of this matchup is uh, the W, right? The disarm. Because not only does it disarm uh, Medusa when she hits you, if you get your shard, you can put it on your teammates and it does the same thing. So I don't know. I don't think this matchup's unplayable for Techies. I just think out of, out of all the carries against Techies, I would lean towards Medusa. And finally is Jakiro. This is kind of a weird one, but honestly, I'm a huge fan of Jakiro, so I wanted to sneak him on the list somewhere. I think this is one of the best pub supports in the game. And if you're looking for a hero that can trade well with the devastating techies in lane, then Jakiro is one of the best, right? This hero just has a lot of attack speeds low. On top of that, Ice Path is a pretty good option against Blastoff because often how Blastoff goes, and it's a funny interaction, but it truly plays like this. How Blastoff goes is Sand King will go in, right? Sand King is playing with techies. Okay, Sand King goes in, he blink stuns the enemy Phantom Assassin. Techies will then blast off and follow up with bombs. However, the Jakiro is going to Ice Path the Sand King who initiated, and in turn, that Ice Path will actually cancel Blast Off. And no matter what angle Techies takes, unless he places it very carefully, he will hit the Ice Path and get canceled in his Blast Off and just end up right next to the person he's trying to chain stun. And so this Ice Path interaction is actually very practical and cool, and certainly also has some place in the laning stage as you can do the same thing. And finally, the last hero we're going to talk about to counter, which I'm not sure a lot of you guys need answers to, is Legion Commander. I would say the best support in the game is Lich against Legion Commander. I think all the save supports like Shadow Demon and Dazzle and Oracle are not bad, but my problem with Oracle is it's countered by Legion with a Dispel. I don't think Dazzle's the best hero. I think Oracle is countered by Legion in lane. I think that lane is really bad. Even Shadow Demon in the lane is, it's okay. That's probably the best of the three, but 
it's all right, but all three of those heroes really don't like laning against Legion, and they don't like getting dueled by Legion. Uh, neither does Lich, obviously, n nor does most supports, but Lich is a hero that it fights Legion well in the lane, and so you have that going for you, right? You have your movement speed and attack speed slow in the Frost Blast, and then of course, naturally, you eventually have Frost Armor, so you have an answer to the duel, and it actually has practicality in the laning stage. The problem with Dazzle and Oracle and Shadow Demon is it's not like you're saving from duel in the laning stage, but Lich's dual saving ability, Frost Shield, also applies in the laning stage, and so it's just kind of one of those situations where it can actually man up to the Legion and slow her down early on, and do well against her in the mid game. and I think that's what a lot of the other support casts are lacking against this hero. And then then we have Medusa. I know guy. I know Medusa literally was a counter to three of the six heroes on this list, but don't want to give you guys like, oh, uh, you can pick uh, Wraith King in a Legion because because it has two lies. It's like, yeah, but the laning stage is really bad and uh, she can dispel your stun on other people. It's like, I mean, I just want to give you matchups, really the matchups that I would like, if I had any choice, I would pick. And frankly, it would be Medusa again. Like that's just the reality because Yes, getting dual this Deuce that doesn't always feel great, right? You want to get off Stone Gaze, you want to get off Manta, but compared to all of the other carries against the Snowballing Legion, Medusa is incredible. And here's the main reason why she's incredible. Legion doesn't want to duel the Dusa, right? You don't want to duel the Dusa. Not at all. You don't. And so, what do you do? You duel her teammate. And then what does Medusa do? She clicks Stone Gaze and runs up to the duel and is guaranteed to Stone Gaze the Legion because she cannot turn around. And this works through BKB. So Stone Gaze is an absolutely horrible spell for a Legion Commander to play against because it completely counters her BKB Blade Melt timing, which is a very key timing on Legion Commander. And finally, the last hero on the list is sometimes Slark. Honestly, this matchup is such a weird one because I think if the Slark player can hit a late game timing, it's favorable. But until then, I actually think it's Legion favored, which is why it's kind of a tough one because Duel goes through Dark Pact, right? That's the reason why Legion has always countered Slark. But what's really interesting about this matchup is if Slark can get to Shard plus Lincolns plus Ags plus one other item, like let's say it's like Echo Saber, Ags, Lincolns plus Shard. What's really cool is that then the Legion can't kill the Slark and Slark Shard, the Death Shroud, just ends duel. It just ends duel. I'm not kidding. It ends duel. Like just straight up. That's how it goes. I played a game. I had a Slark on my team. We lost the early game because Legion beat Slark. And that's why I'm a little bit nervous about putting this on the list. I even wrote on my, my Google Doc here, I said, sometimes Slark. <laughs> because if you can get to your timing, you're a hero that can feast off her high age people. You don't necessarily kill yourself on blade mail compared to other carries because you're doing like a lot of like overtime damage. And then the shard is just, it's insane. So maybe Slark support, like actually no joke. <laughs> Slark support is very good against Legion. I'm not even just saying that, like it actually it is. So uh, it's something to keep in mind, guys. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy these counter to the meta videos, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Comment something down below, like your favorite beverage. I'd love to know what, what beverages you guys enjoy. Personally, I've been drinking a lot of almond milk as of late, and honestly, it's, it's, it's great. It's very refreshing. It's pretty healthy, and it doesn't have lactose, which is wonderful. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.